Hey, my friends, we will be right back to the show, but I have a question for you. Are you struggling with the impact of childhood trauma? Well, know that you're not alone. I'm here to let you know that I'm starting a brand new weekly coaching group that includes a year of live coaching, accountability, support, habit and goal setting, and more. I'm starting a wait list for the group right now, and I'm only taking a handful of people. And I'll let you know that through this personalized coaching, we'll work together to help you understand how your childhood trauma has shaped your beliefs, behaviors, emotions, and will help you create a roadmap for healing and growth. Right now, you can schedule an absolutely free coaching session with me and get put on the wait list if you go to thinkunbroken.com. My friends, it's your time to turn your trauma into triumph, breakdowns into breakthroughs, and become the hero of your own story. And I'm here to support you in doing that. Just go to thinkunbroken.com to register for a free coaching call with me and to get put on the wait list for the brand new weekly coaching program. We'll be right back to the show. But before we do, I want to tell you about today's sponsor, Factor Mills. Dot com, where if you go to factormills.com slash unbroken50 and use the code unbroken50, you can get 50% off your first order. That's factormills.com slash unbroken50. If you're like me and you are a person who is busy trying to create a life, heal, work on their health, wealth, and relationships, and not to mention deal with the day-to-days of normal life, you do not have time to be going to the grocery store and trying to figure out what you're going to cook every single day of the week. In fact, one time I did the math and I realized I was spending over 15 hours a week at the grocery store and cooking. When I added factor, I got to use that time for myself, for my family, for my friends, for my community, and for my business. And so if you're in the place where you need some more support in the kitchen, head to factormills.com slash unbroken50 and use the code unbroken50 to get 50% off. Hey, my friends, we will be right back to the show, but I have a question for you. Are you struggling with the impact of childhood trauma? Well, know that you're not alone. I'm here to let you know that I'm starting a brand new weekly coaching group that includes a year of live coaching, accountability, support, habit and goal setting, and more. I'm starting a wait list for the group right now, and I'm only taking a handful of people. And I'll let you know that through this personalized coaching, we'll work together to help you understand how your childhood trauma has shaped your beliefs, behaviors, emotions, and will help you create a roadmap for healing and growth. Right now, you can schedule an absolutely free coaching session with me and get put on the wait list if you go to thinkunbroken.com. My friends, it's your time to turn your trauma into triumph, breakdowns into breakthroughs, and become the hero of your own story. And I'm here to support you in doing that. Just go to thinkunbroken.com to register for a free coaching call with me and to get put on the wait list for the brand new weekly coaching program. There's a fascinating conversation to be had about purpose and identity. And in today's podcast, I sit down with Bryna Haynes, who is the founder of World Changers Media. And What a beautiful title for a company. What a beautiful idea and concept for what it means to become who we are, being world changers. So many people, and I will include myself in this conversation, have found that through creating purpose, through understanding self and building your identity, not only are you able to serve yourself and your community, church, family, world better, but also there's a a semblance and understanding of the ability that you have to go and create amazing and big and beautiful things. And I really appreciated this conversation with Bryna because one of the things that I found myself struggling with the most in my journey was identity, was courage, was the willingness to step into and create and understand who I am. And, you know, we all have these powers inside of us to shape our future, to create our lives and what we want. And that's exactly what we are going to talk about today because Unbroken Nation, I believe inherently that we all have the power and the ability to be the hero of our own story. And, you know, we look at the things that we resist in life. And one of the things that Bryna talks about with me in this conversation is, you know, that so many of us are searching for purpose 
and we can't find it until we understand why often the things that we are resisting the most are the keys to our fulfillment and to who it is that we are and to what comes along with this journey. And I think you're going to get so much out of this episode because I know that I certainly did. And I appreciate the massive amount of value that not only did she speak into my life in this conversation, but what she's delivering to you guys, the Unbroken Nation. So, of course, please request that you'll take a moment, hit a review, hit the subscribe button. Just let us know what you think about the show so we can keep creating amazing content that brings value to your life on your journey to help you get unstuck, learn to love yourself, and ultimately be the hero of your own story. But without further ado, my friends... Let's get into the show. Hey, what's up, Unbroken Nation? Welcome to the Think Unbroken podcast. I'm your host, Michael Unbroken, and this podcast is about helping trauma survivors let go of the past, overcome their fear, discover their identity, become the hero of their own story, and ultimately to be unbroken. Our goal in company is to bring on guests and experts in the fields of mental, physical, and psychological health to help you overcome the past, to take back your power. And in this podcast, we are unedited and unfiltered, and we're going to give it to you real so that you can start to create massive change in your life. If you're curious about learning more outside the podcast, you can get a free copy of my book, Think Unbroken, at book dot think unbroken dot com. That's book dot think unbroken dot com where you can get a copy of my number one best selling book, Think Unbroken, Understanding and Overcoming Childhood Trauma. The most important thing that you can ever do, my friends, is show up for yourself. And that's where you are today. And I appreciate you. I have massive gratitude for you. And without further ado, let's get into the show. We'll be right back to the show. But before we do, I'm going to take a moment and tell you about my new book, Unbroken Man, a man's guide to being the hero of their own story. I sat down a few months ago and realized that there are so many men in the world that need guidance, that need support, that need to learn about trauma, removing themselves from toxic masculinity, breaking down the barriers to vulnerability, getting unstuck, and ultimately learning the tools to become the hero of their own story. Unbroken Man is available for pre-order right now if you go to men.thinkunbroken.com, where you'll also get access to over $1,000 in bonuses, including the six-week in-depth trauma healing coaching app, which you'll get instant access to. I created Unbroken Man to be accessible to everyone around the world, but it is written for men from the guise of a man, and I hope that you will find it to be a practical tool on your healing journey in the same way that thousands of men around the world have. So check out men.thinkunbroken.com to pre-order, and until next time, be unbroken. Hey, what's up, Unbroken Nation? Hope that you're doing well wherever you are in the world today. Very excited to be back with you with another episode with my friend, Bryna Haynes, who is the founder and CEO of World Changer Media. Right on, my friend. How are you today? What is happening in your world? Oh, I'm doing great, and, and life is amazing. Thank you so much for the opportunity to have this conversation. I'm very excited to be here with you and just have an incredible discussion. Yeah, as am I, and I appreciate you being here. As I know, the Unbroken Nation will as well. And for those of them who do not know you, tell us a little bit about your backstory and how you got to where you are today. Well, I was laughing because before we started the recording, you had said, you know, if you have a backstory like I was an astronaut when I was eight, don't say that because, you know, who's going to relate to that? But it made me laugh because when I was a little kid, my dream was to be a CIA agent and a prima ballerina. And I was going to use the one as the cover for the other. So fantasy has made my life rich <laughs> since, since I can remember. Um I, I feel like I've lived uh, like about four distinct lifetimes and, uh, you know, growing up as a very, uh, very emotional, very sensitive kid, um, you know, uh, making a living as a, as a musician, playing in coffee shops in Atlanta for a while, starting a different career and eventually landing up in the, in the writing world. And um, with every evolution, and I think this happens to so many of us, we, um, you know, we, we grow and we change and we think that we've left certain parts of ourselves behind, like on the side of the road. And, uh, and they, they always come back around in the most unexpected ways. 
So I was just, I was kind of just giggling about our conversation earlier. <laughs> like, oh yeah, yeah, no, I was, I was going to be the six-year-old CIA agent. <laughs> yeah, I actually relate to that a lot. I was obsessed with um, James Bond as a kid. Still am, full disclosure. But, you know, I, I think that, like you, I've lived many lives. And I, I think probably, and I could be wrong, I don't know, I don't know everyone, but I'd have to assume so many people have lived this multitude of lives, and especially in the world that we live in. And, and I think so many people are kind of in this place in which they're trying to search for purpose. They're trying to find out why they're here. They're trying all these things. I love what you said, like these things of your past will come back around. Um, talk about purpose. And, and specifically what I'm really curious about is how can people find it? Because it's such a word thrown around so frequently in society right now. Everybody's like, find your purpose, find your purpose. I don't think anybody ever really tells us how. So I'd love for you to dive into that a little bit. Well, you know, this was such a loaded question for me for so many years, because um, especially as a young person, you know, coming up in the world, trying to figure out, you know, what was going to be my career choice? Where was I going to land in life? And it felt like if I didn't find, you know, purpose, quote unquote purpose, that that somehow I was just taking up space or that I was wasting my time here on planet Earth. And it was it was felt like a lot of pressure. And I actually didn't learn a good way to define purpose for myself until very recently. And this tidbit comes from actually a, a client of mine. Um, a leadership expert, Tim Hebert is his name. And he says that purpose is perpetuating the things that you value. That's it. And that struck me so powerfully because if we can just lean into perpetuating the things that we value, the whole search for purpose just becomes, you just need to look inside and it's there, it's right there. So if we value community, then we do work that perpetuates community. If we value connection, we do work that perpetuates connection. If we, um, if we value ideas, we do work that perpetuates the growth and dissemination of ideas. And to me, that's been the best way to explore this because there are a hundred million ways or more in which we can live our lives every single day. And if we're searching for that needle in a haystack before we think we found purpose, we're going to waste a lot of time feeling purposeless. Yeah, and I, I think a lot of people do feel purposeless. And part of that is maybe it's just a society we live in where there's a measurement against material possession and having this perfect life and things of that nature. But I, I like the idea of, that you shared in the perpetuation of that. And, and so much of that feels like a, a creation to me. And, and what I mean by that is there, it almost feels as if, for lack of a better way to phrase it, here you are with life and you have this Play-Doh and you have to go in here and make it into the thing that you want to. And, and, and I wonder, as you're in this, why did that strike you so fondly? Because you know, you, you um, have to imagine you've heard things about purpose before in your life, but what about that felt so true for you? Because I'm sitting here listening to that. I'm like, yeah, I, I totally relate to this. Yeah. Well, you know, I spent a lot of time in various spiritual practices in my, you know, starting in my twenties and, and continuing through present day. And everybody has a different idea of purpose. So if you speak to, um, you know, people who are practicing uh, paganism and, and earth religions, they have one kind of view of purpose that kind of permeates the practice. And the same thing in the yoga community, the same thing in the um, Zen Buddhism community. And I've, I've kind of dipped my toes lightly in all of these practices. And there seems to be this, this endless search that goes on for so many people um, who are on spiritual paths or not, but that it's like landing on the thing that makes me me. And what I've discovered and what's made my life just a heck of a lot more comfortable and, and less anxiety provoking is the fact that th there is no one thing that makes me me. I am a collection of experiences and thoughts and feelings and decisions. And when I think about purpose through the lens of values, as I learned when, when I was taught that, that way, um, 
what what it really empowers is that I can be purposeful in anything I do in every moment of my life. I can be purposeful with my kids because one of my biggest values is is expanding world changing ideas. Like I want to be working with and expanding and empowering the ideas that need to be seen and heard for the world to change in the way we need it to change for us to all survive and thrive. I can do that as a parent. I can do that as a business owner. I can do that as a friend. I can do that as a coach. I can do that anywhere. I, sh- I can do it at the grocery store. You know, I can strike up a conversation with a random stranger about something and I can actually do that purposeful work. And it's kind of an amazing place to be is that anywhere I go and anything I do, I don't have to be this one thing in order to be on purpose. And I think that that idea, particularly as it's, it's perpetuated among entrepreneurs, can be actually really damaging and really limiting because there's this fear that we can't move forward in our work until we land on the thing, on the purpose, on the identity, the definition of us. And when we get stuck in trying to define ourselves as the one thing or the one job, or, you know, we we're trying to figure out the one outcome that we produce as all of our marketing coaches tell us we need, right? Um, there's so much of our, our beauty and complexity that just gets lost. And so it's just, it's a lot easier to just show up every day and say, this is what I value. How can I make more of that? And, and for people, and I agree with this and I look at my life and I'm like author, speaker, coach, podcast host, business owner, entrepreneur, friend, brother, lover, like all of these things. I, I sit here and I go, I, I've always very much so pushed against any narrative in which I would be pocketed into one idea of who it is that I may or may not be. Yeah. And, and I think maybe that's just part of me being incredibly stubborn and being like, you can't label me. And, and I wonder for those listening who are like, I hear this, I kind of resonate it with it, but I still feel so incredibly stuck about this idea of this is who I am. Mm. What would you say to those folks who have that thought? I would say that this is who I am is an idea and you have permission to change your mind. And one of the really cool things about identity is that it is a construct. Even though we feel very attached to certain portions of our identity, it really is something that ultimately we get to choose. And one of the most powerful exercises that I've ever done and this has worked immensely well for people in my world, is um, to, to imagine every day that you had the chance to be the most amazing version of yourself and just start making statements and asking questions. Today I will fill in the blank because I am a person who fill in the blank. and. Your decision is what sets the parameters for your identity. And you see this in people who have made radical transformations in their lives, people who have overcome addiction, people who have um, come out of really challenging circumstances. They made a decision that that previous version of themselves was no longer who they are. And once that decision is made, it takes a little while for the neural pathways to catch up, but the decision itself shifts our identity. And so if we're feeling stuck around, um, for example, what I hear a lot is like, I would love to do X, Y, Z in my business, or I would love to do X, Y, Z in my life, but I am, insert perceived flaw here, right? Um, You know, but I'm not organized, but I'm not motivated, but I'm not smart enough, but I'm not connected enough. Um, Those are beliefs about ourselves that we can change and we can actually gather evidence to prove that the new identity, the chosen identity is correct. And it's kind of an amazing thing because it, it, really shows you just how subjective reality actually is. 
Um, but when you choose to be a new version of yourself, your brain will actually start gathering information that proves that what you have decided is true is true. And when that starts happening, it's completely magical because you'll start to notice that you do have evidence that you're capable. You do have evidence that you're connected. You just weren't noticing it before because you had made a decision that it wasn't true. And so um, leaning into your power to change how you feel about yourself, I think is one of the most radical and revolutionary things that you can do because you have the power to become anything that you decide you will become. And if that is the case, then what would, what would be different, right? If we could become anything that we decided could be true for us, what would we no longer have to worry about? What would we no longer have to limit ourselves by? And it takes time to lean into that truth. But when we do, we find our power. Yeah, and, and I agree with that. And I love what you, you use two words that I use every single day in my life, and that's choice and decision. And, and I think ultimately, the only way you're ever going to truly be yourself is you, you have to decide that. And I, I fear that people will hear this conversation and go, okay, cool, easier said than done. All it sounds like is I just need to be me. And honestly, like no bullshit to some extent. I'm like, yeah, that's literally how you do it. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you, you do. But, but I think that there's fear. There's fear. There's fear of judgment, fear of shame, fear of guilt. Like I, I'm a proponent of the idea, not necessarily in an exact sense, but to some extent that we live in a matrix, that we live in a, a way, in a world within a construct in which we have the ability to instead of us bending ourselves to the world, instead bend the world to us. And and what I'm curious about, so in laying in this foundation and thinking about the ability to choose and decide, what, what's the level deeper of this in terms of creating yourself? Like what does that really look like? Well, to me, it looks like living according to a vision. And so one of the things that I think we get a little backwards is that we think that the vision will come once we figure out who we are. And it's actually the opposite, is that we decide how we want our life to be. We decide who we want to be within that life. And then the universe, the matrix, the, the you know quantum field shapes itself around that decision. And the other thing that we get backwards in this is that we have to know the how. And so a lot of people who teach manifestation will talk about co-creating with the universe or co-creating with God and, um, you know, creating this vision um, that is then fulfilled in this co-creative process. But what most people lean into is that their part is the how and the what and the why is up to the universe, but that's actually backwards. So when we're trying to create something new, when we're trying to become a new version of ourselves, what we need is the vision and the decision, and we need the what and the why. I want to be this version of me because, and then we have that, that picture, and then we say, okay, this is what I have decided will be, and then the universe's portion of that is delivering the how. The how is none of our business. We do not get to micromanage the universe or our lives in pursuit of this creative process. And working in that way requires a huge amount of trust. Um, but there have been times, I guarantee everyone listening to this podcast can, can come up with a time in their life where they made a decision. They didn't know how it was going to happen. They didn't know when it was going to happen, but they decided that it would be so and it became so. And some of us do us do this subconsciously, and some of us do this with things we don't want, which is also challenging. We decide that something will be a particular way, even though we don't want it, but we've decided that it will be, and then it comes true, and we feel like, you know, like we've gotten confirmation that our fears are valid. Um, and, you know, and 
I also never want to discount the fact that many things in life are not in our control. We're bumping around up against other people's realities all the time. And there's overlap. You know, we are not, um, at least not in our human form, completely sovereign over every single thing that happens in our lives. Um, we are part of, an, of, a, of a matrix of a web. So there's a little bit of that going on too, but that doesn't take away our power to create and our power to shake the web in a really positive way and create a ripple effect that extends far beyond us. But there's yeah. a difference between being passive in that and just taking whatever comes and actually being the one to pluck the string, right? Yeah, dive into that more because I, mm. I think that in passing, people will not hear that. Okay. So I think one of the things that's really important to consider is how our viewpoint affects our daily reality, how, how the lens that we put on ourselves and our lives actually has an effect. And one of the, one of the cool things that I learned when I was studying the sort of crossover between, you know, quantum realities and neuroscience and how our brains work and all of that. What I came across are, are two really key things that I think will help people get a little bit more out of this conversation. One is that we have an internal filtration system, just like the air filter in your house or the water filtration system in your city. And our internal filters are set by our beliefs and our priorities. What we decide is important is what is filtered and given to our brain as priority information. This is called, the, the filtration system is called the reticular activating system. And basically, our filters are conscious. Hey, you know, I want a new car. You know, I, I want to, I want to, um, I'm looking for this car. I think I want to buy a Mini Cooper, right? And all of a sudden you see Mini Coopers everywhere, even though you hadn't seen one in months before that. It wasn't that there weren't Mini Coopers. You're just noticing them now because you've told your brain it's a priority. Um, when you decide that, you know, after being single for a while, you want to start dating all of a sudden everything around you. I mean, let's not like go into algorithms and like, you know, who's watching us on Facebook, but, um, but all of a sudden all of this information about relationships is coming your way. And that's not because that, that information was not making its way into your reality before. It's simply that you have decided it's a priority. This also happens on a subconscious level. So when we believe things about ourselves, um, one of the most challenging um, beliefs that I've been contending with my whole life and that I've been rooting out like string by string is this belief that I don't matter. And I think a lot of us carry that one. And I think that's kind of, you know, needles us in our search for purpose. Um, but if we have a belief that we don't matter, or we have a belief that um, you know, that some sort of, of, of belief that impacts our daily life, whatever that might be. We'll be right back, but I wanted to take a quick moment to tell you about the Think Unbroken six-week trauma healing coaching program. If you go to coaching.thinkunbroken.com, that's coaching.thinkunbroken.com, you can sign up for the six-week daily Think Unbroken Trauma Healing Coaching Program. In this program, we're going to go over the six principles of healing trauma, adaptation, understanding the impacts of trauma, how to become the hero of your own story, what to do next, and ultimately what it means to be unbroken. For more information about this six-week coaching program, which you can download as an app on your phone and take with you everywhere, no matter where you are in the world, it's interactive. It's built about giving you practical tools that you can use in real time. And if you're ready for what's next in your life, go to coaching.thinkunbroken.com. Again, that's coaching.thinkunbroken.com. Now let's get back to the show. Um, that is a filter for our brain as well. So we get 8 billion pieces of information coming at us every single day. Sensory information, um, you know, digital information, relationship information, energetic information, 8 billion pieces a day. But the only ones that we notice 
are the ones we have decided are a priority. And so knowing that, we can actually switch the filters. And so if we decide that we want to switch that, that identity from I don't matter to I matter, and we work on you know, reiterating that this is like why affirmations actually can work when they're done appropriately. We reiterate, we reiterate, we reiterate, I matter, I matter, I matter. And after about three days of consistent practice, that's the, the current number is like 72 hours of consistent practice, we begin to wear a new neural pathway. And all of a sudden, the universe will start presenting us with evidence that we matter. This evidence was there before. We just didn't have the filter set so we could see it. And so when we're looking at changing our identities, this is where the decision process is so vital because what we decide is important is what gets communicated to our conscious mind. All the other evidence is out there. We just won't see it. And so this is a really important evolutionary mechanism because otherwise, if we didn't have that filter, like the feeling of, you know, this chair under my butt and like my headphones in my ears or, you know, the, the you know, air filter system coming on and blowing air on me would be just as important in my brain as the conversation that we're having. But because we have this ability to filter, we get to decide what's important. I'm not distracted by the chair. Right. Unless unless I mention it. And now I'm like, oh, this chair is comfy. You know? So so there's this this process that we can go through of identifying what we have decided is important and what we can decide it needs to flip. And again, just like you said, the decision is the key factor. I decide that I'm going to receive more information about why I'm worthy, about why I matter, about why my work is important, about why the world needs me. And it does take consistent practice, but with practice, the filter will change and you'll start to actually receive that feedback and information. So this is really, you know, this is probably deeper than we intended to go, Michael, but this is, I think it's important for people to realize, like, we have control over this stuff. This isn't something that just like we get programmed in one way by our childhood and we have no choice for the rest of our lives. We have a choice about who to be. We have a choice about what the world reflects to us. The other yeah, piece. Like, oh, sorry. Please. Go ahead. Please. No, go ahead. Well, I was going to say the other piece is actually about the questions we ask because our questions mm -hmm. are a feedback mechanism. I spent a good portion of my young adulthood asking questions like, why doesn't anybody care? You know, I went through a, a very dark depression um, for several years and I was asking questions like, why doesn't anybody know I'm here? Why don't I matter? Um, why, why am I not receiving the love that I want? Why is this happening to me? And my brain, so you have this, again, another, you know, mental mechanism. If you ask your brain a question, your brain has to answer the question. And this is called instinctive elaboration. And it's a reflex, just like when the doctor hits your knee with the little hammer thing, your knee goes, boop, right? It's a reflex. You ask yourself a question, your brain has to answer. And so what kind of questions are you asking yourself? Because the first place your brain goes for answers is your subconscious mind into that storehouse of 8 billion pieces of information a day that it has racked up over all these years. And so you're, you're answering questions in the now moment based on past experience, but not only that, through your filtered interpretation of past experience. So talk about confirmation bias, right? So it's really incredible when you start observing the questions that you ask yourself, are these questions you really want answered? Are these questions that are helpful, that are going to move you forward, that are going to give you answers that are actionable? Me asking myself, why don't I matter? Not actionable information. It was simply confirmation for the emotion that I was feeling, and it played over and over and over. And purposeful questions lead to actionable answers. So instead of like, why do I feel this way? The question might become, how would I like to feel? Get those answers. The question isn't, 
can I do this? Can I start this business? Can I start this relationship? Can I heal myself? Ask how. How can I start this business? How can I heal myself? How can I be an amazing partner? And the answers you get, if your brain has no backstory of information about those answers, it will go out into the universe and bring them back for you. Yeah, there's a lot of beauty in that. And I think about this idea about being solution oriented and how that really entangles itself in the questions that I ask of myself. Because it's so easy. As you were speaking, the thought has come to me that sits with me pretty much almost every single moment of every day is where attention goes, energy follows. Yes. And and you spend we spend so much time in negativity searching for why things suck, why the world is terrible, why we can't be us, why we can't and, and it's like there all these negative words carry so much weight and so much power. And I remember a, a quick anecdote. I was I was a young child. I was on a bowling league when I was eight years old. I fucking hated it. And and I kept <laughs> rolling like gunner balls all the time, all the time, all the time. And and my uncle came up to me one day, I'm like throwing this tantrum because I just could not stand it. And and it's one of the most important moments that I remember in, in childhood. He puts his hand on my shoulder, he kneels down, he looks at me, he goes, you need to stop crying and you have to take the word can't out of your vocabulary. And that has held true in my entirety of my life since that moment and it was really beautiful, except there was a little bit of a disconnect because I didn't realize can't doesn't mean like also go break the wall and be a terrible person and burn shit down, right? You got to kind of get very pointed and focused about what you want. And so, you know, part of what I've always come to, or at least more recently, I should say in the last decade or so, is looking at the answer to the question always being yes and then how. And, and not limiting ourselves and not putting ourselves in this position. Because look, the, the next worst thing is coming. Like whatever it is, like I promise you it's on its way. It's probably here already and they just haven't written the headline yet. But it's on its way. And so you have to think about this idea, what I term and phrase as being solution oriented, knowing that if you put in the right effort on a long enough timeline, the, line, the life that you want can be your life. But so many people are hearing this and they're going, oh, you guys are just positive. First and foremost, let me be very clear. I'm a realist. I am not optimistic by any scope of the imagination. I am simply a realist, but I've always measured capability in the world by has someone else done this? Because if they have, that means it's plausible. And, and what I want to dive into here and go a little bit deeper into is, you know, we talk about this role of our chosen identity and creating our experiences through that. But so many people I know, they're listening to this and they're like, fuck you guys, I'm still stuck. This isn't helpful. So mm -hmm. in practicality sense, where do you start? Like, what are the actionable things that people can do in real time? Literally right now, they're listening to this. They can go, okay, I can go apply this to my life and start to watch these things that Brian is talking about take shape in my life. Absolutely. And I know that feeling of being stuck so well. And that stuck feeling kept me in a lot of situations that were really unhealthy because I didn't know how to ask the right questions. You know, um, my first marriage was, uh, was to someone who, you know, was an amazing person and also had some pretty serious addiction issues and, um, you know, living in that and through that and with the, you know, the blackouts and the, the violence and the, you know, the things that happen in those situations, I didn't know even to ask, is this normal? Is this okay? I didn't even know how to ask that. And so I think the first thing we have to remember is that we have the power to ask different questions. Is this really what I want for my life? And if the answer is no, then what do I want? What, what else is possible for me? One of the best questions to add to your arsenal is what else is possible? Because if you get stuck in that negative feedback loop, you can actually break it by asking yourself over and over and over, what else is possible? What else is possible? What else is possible? 
Because yeah, it is entirely possible that the whole world is broken and everything sucks. And you know, the whole world's going to shit. We have plenty of evidence to prove that, don't we? And yet, is that the reality that I want to continue to perpetuate? Because the more that we we accept that something is unchangeable, the more it becomes unchangeable. And so just asking, what else is possible? Is it possible that there's also really amazing things happening in the world? Is it possible that there is another option for me that I'm just not seeing right now? And that's okay. You don't have to see it. Just recognize that it's possible that it's there. And so leaning into, you know, there's something else here, even if I can't see it yet. The other thing is, and this was, this was really helpful for me, um, and it may be helpful for some of you, is to ask, how do I want to feel right now? Because there's the, the reality of how we feel, and there's like, how do I want to feel? And if you're feeling completely just stuck and frustrated, and you'd like to feel creative, for example, you know, we don't want to try to jump from like, rock bottom to like, I'm dancing on cloud nine, because that's, it just feels impossible. And so it will be impossible. When something feels impossible, we'll make it impossible, even if theoretically it is possible. So like, how do I move a couple steps up the ladder? I feel stuck. I'd like to feel creative. Okay. What makes me feel creative? And if you can answer that question and then follow through on the action, this is the hardest part. Because then all of those limiting beliefs like to sneak up, like, yeah, but it's not okay for me to, um, you know, to stop hustling in my business and go take a break and take a walk. And we make all of these reasons why it's not okay for us to have the thing that we want. And the first step to all of this is just to pay attention. Because so much of the time, we don't even know what's happening. We don't notice the inner dialogue that keeps us spinning in circles. And so the first step just notice, notice what you're saying to yourself. Do I like what I'm saying to myself? What else is possible? Right? It's not a huge leap. It's not, it's not becoming the most positive person that you know. And I'm with you, Michael. Like, I tend to be a realist. Like, my husband, the happiest man on earth. The man never has a less than positive thought. He's like, he's a unicorn. Next to him, I'm like Debbie Downer. Right? <laughs> Um, and so there's this, this balance that we find of like, it's okay to feel all the feelings, but we have some choice about whether we want to feel those feelings all the time, or if we want to be with them until they pass and then choose a different route to ask a different question. And I think if everybody just started there, what else is possible? What else is possible? Yeah. The answers that we get are going to change the world. Yeah, and, and they will literally change your world. Yeah, and, and through that change, I mean, you can impact the world. You know, I, I think about even this podcast when I sat down four years ago and I was like, okay, I'm going to go and make this thing. It was like, this is fulfilling to me. It gives me the opportunity to learn. And I, I kept asking myself, well, how do you do this? What does it take? How do you show up? Who do you get on? What? And and at first it sucked. Like it just, and like, I may even look back on this in 15 years and be like, it still wasn't as good as it could have been yet. Right. And I, I'm willing to face the resistance of myself of wanting to quit every day. And that, that small voice in your head that pops up. And for me now it's smashed down. It's almost infinitesimal. And, and so really it's about, okay, when I feel resistance, when I feel called to not want to do something I always think to myself, well, maybe this is how you get to where you want to go. And I know that's something that you speak on as well. And so I'd I'd love for you to break down why the things that we most often resist are also like the keys. Like it's like the keys to the castle and like what that really means. Yeah. Well, especially those of us who have, um, who have inherited or life experience based programming that it's safer to stay small. It's safer to not be noticed. Um, You know, we have to, we have to keep ourselves in a box, like whatever that box looks like. Right. Um, 
we will most often resist, and I definitely raise my hand here, I still do this. We will most often resist the things that feel most authentic to us because they're also the things that make us the most vulnerable. And so being the truth of who we are is often going to feel like the most scary, awful, oh my God, there's no fucking way I'm doing that kind of thing. And also, we, I firmly believe that we have the capacity to transform all of our life experience into fuel for positive change. So I'm not going to like go, oh, everything happens for a reason because like some shit is unreasonable and there's no justifying it. But I truly believe that we have the capacity to take whatever has happened to us and around us and through us in our lives and turn it into fuel for positive change. And so when we lean into that, a lot of times the things that we resist are going to be the things that we don't want to look at again. And yet the things that we don't want to look at again or parts of ourselves that we thought we left behind, and sometimes this is really benign, right? Like I left my corporate job and I never want to be the person I was in corporate again. And yet the person you were in corporate has a skill set that can be massively impactful for the people you want to serve through perpetuating your values through purpose-driven work. And so we resist like looking at the aspects of ourselves we thought we were done with. But most of the time, when we, when we take all of who we have been and all the different lives we've lived and all the lessons we've learned and all the experiences we've had, and we fuse them into one lens through which we can view the work we want to do in the world, whatever that is, whether that's actual like running a business or being a parent or being in a relationship, whatever, we fuse all of those beautiful gems that we've acquired into one lens. We feel like we've landed in something that literally no one else on the planet can do or replicate. And so the resistance for me has always come about bringing the things that I thought I was done with back you know, talking about the things that I thought I would never have to talk about again. Um, Looking at the dreams that I had that I left by the side of the road and thought I was done with. Looking at the version of me that I thought I had outgrown and seeing that she still has wisdom to bring today, even though I'm no longer that person. And so the resistance isn't necessarily about resisting a thing or an event or a task or an action. It's really about resisting embracing ourselves. And if we could find a way to do that, even if it's just a tiny bit at a time, we will find more connection to our purpose. We will find more fulfillment. We will find more success because we'll be using all of our skill sets simultaneously which again is something that no one else can replicate. Only you have lived your life. Only you have learned what you've learned. Only you have fused that learning into this very unique lens. And, you know, when we can kind of get okay with that, because a lot of times it doesn't feel okay, but when we can kind of get okay with that, that nothing about our lives has been wasted, then we lean into something much greater, I think. Yeah, and and I would agree with you. One of the one of the section titles of of my first book is called "Create," period. You, period. Because that's so much of what it is. And and there's a word that came to mind as you're another word came to mind as you're speaking here, and it's arbitrator. And and in real time, I don't I don't think I've ever done this on the show before. I looked up the definition because I was like, I want to I want to be able to recite this exactly from the dictionary. And it says an arbitrator is one who has the power of deciding or prescribing according to his or her own absolute pleasure. And that's the truth about life. We have the ability to be the exact person that we want to be. 
And you've just got to be willing to step into it because, you know, I've said it before, there's no Disney moment. Whatever you think is coming, it ain't. You're going to have to put in a ton of work, but on the backside of it, you can have beauty. You can have this life. You can create the identity. Who you are today does not have to be who you are tomorrow. It doesn't have to be who you are in four minutes. Like, it's crazy to me that when you make decisions, how quickly your life changes. And I love that you use that word. It's my favorite word in the English dictionary. And, and it really is probably one of the most powerful concepts that someone can wrap their head around. Right on, my friend. This conversation has been absolutely incredible. Before I ask you my last question, can you tell everyone where they can find you? Thank you so much. Yeah, you, you can all find me at worldchangers.media. That's my publishing company. And I have a link right on the homepage to book a call with me. I don't I don't like do like lead magnets or downloads. Like I love FaceTime. So if there's anything you want to chat me with me about, book related or not, you can just book a call with me right on that website. Brilliant. I love it. And of course, we'll put that link in the show notes as well as links to your social media um, where people can also find you. My last question for you, my friend, what does it mean to you to be unbroken? I think it means being all of who we are and allowing all of who we are and who we've been to inform the person we're becoming and not excluding any part of ourselves or any part of our experience and not cutting anything about ourselves off because it's uncomfortable. Just really leaning into who we are who we are choosing to be and allowing that to come through as a gift. Beautifully said, my friend. Thank you so much for being here and sharing all of your wealth of knowledge with us. Unbroken Nation, thank you so much for listening. Please like, subscribe, comment, share, tell a friend. And until next time, my friends, be unbroken. I'll see ya. Unbroken Nation, hope that you just got a tremendous amount of value from today's episode. I want to know what you think. Please do me a favor and review, rate, and share the episode with three friends on social media today. It would mean the world if you did, because ultimately at the end of the day, creating community and connection is how we heal generational trauma in the world. And I need your help to do that Unbroken Nation. So if you're on iTunes or Spotify or wherever you are, please like, comment, share, review. I want to know not only what you like about the show, but how I can make the show better, how I can make this further about helping you on your healing journey. So do me a favor. And when you do shoot me a screenshot of you making the review to my DM at Michael Unbroken on Instagram so that I can have a conversation with you, say hi, and more importantly, so I can share it with the Unbroken Nation. Thank you so much, my friend. Hey, my friends, we will be right back to the show, but I have a question for you. Are you struggling with the impact of childhood trauma? Well, know that you're not alone. I'm here to let you know that I'm starting a brand new weekly coaching group that includes a year of live coaching, accountability, support, habit and goal setting, and more. I'm starting a wait list for the group right now, and I'm only taking a handful of people. And I'll let you know that through this personalized coaching, we'll work together to help you understand how your childhood trauma has shaped your beliefs, behaviors, emotions, and will help you create a roadmap for healing and growth. Right now, you can schedule an absolutely free coaching session with me and get put on the wait list if you go to thinkunbroken.com. My friends, it's your time to turn your trauma into triumph, breakdowns into breakthroughs, and become the hero of your own story. And I'm here to support you in doing that. Just go to thinkunbroken.com to register for a free coaching call with me and to get put on the wait list for the brand new weekly coaching program. The future of legal THC is Mood's THCA flower. Find it today at hellomood.com, the best online dispensary that ships discreetly to your door. Great for beginner and veteran users, Mood enhances awe-inspiring experiences with a variety of high-quality products you can trust from gummies and pre-rolls to classic flour and so much more. Try Mood's new THCA flour today. And for 20% off your first order plus a free pre-roll of THCA flour, go to hellomood.com and use promo code PODCAST20.